I use liquify on almost every single image that I produce. The key to this wonderful Photoshop tool is to use it modestly and simply. My whole mantra behind portrait photography is stripping everything down to its simplest form. So the only thing left is a human connection. Is there a hair out of place? Weird lines on an outfit? Something wonky in the background? Uneven shoulders? A crooked necklace? Anything to take your eyes away from the subject. Then it's a distraction and it doesn't need to be there. Nine times out of ten, I fix these issues with Liquify. What's up everyone? My name's Corey Vanderplu at Corey Photo on Twitter and Instagram. Here's how I liquify. Liquifying can be a tricky thing. You can easily go too far and mess up backgrounds unknowingly. You can make things look unnatural. And there's this whole issue about liquefying the human form to such an impossible shape that it will only perpetuate the problem of impossible beauty standards. So how do you keep from going too far? The only logical answer is to practice constantly and relentlessly. Here are four ways that I use liquefy as part of my regular workflow. Portrait balancing. Like I mentioned in a previous video, the beginning of every portrait session begins with balancing the image and making sure all of the lines are corrected. Here's some quick examples. Let's start with these ones. Doesn't look like I have to do much, but when I change my crop background to black, you can see that it's just missing the edges here. So what I want to do is duplicate this layer, shift Apple X, and just stretch out the shoulders, nothing crazy. Boom, done. Throw in all your layers and retouch it. And there you go. Didn't do much, it was just to extend the shoulders to the edges. This old kook. So what I had here was, I throw my crop on and I see that I'm just a little wide, so I had to extend it. But you see when I extend it, I'll show you the process here. Just simple, very simple, just very crude as well you can see that it's just not quite right. So what I do is the same thing as in other images. Start with a big brush and work your way down. Now you can already see that the shoulders are even. Already looks good. But then what I had to do was take this and I shape this just a little bit more. Just to give the hair a little bit. Then I added a little gray along the edges to clean up the side. And there you go. Balanced shoulder, kooky hair. Works perfectly. This one, this one was a little different too. When you take off and get the raw, you can actually see that her hair is blocking her face. I didn't like that. It was just a distraction. You almost want this eye to be covered. So how did I do that? Open up a new one, new layer. And you just want this to just cover the eyes. So again, almost every time it's a big brush. And I guarantee you that it would cover the eye. And now what I'm gonna do is select a mask. And then all I wanna do is, you can see this white, so I'm gonna make this black by pushing X. B for the brush tool. Small brush, and all I'm doing is painting this back. Yeah, something around there. But you get it, the idea is simple. Boom, liquefied. This one's the same. Take away all of the layers and you're left with this. The crop's nice, but my image just was a little too wide. So all I did was duplicate this layer. Shift Command X. And just follow the lines here. Careful with your lines, but yeah, that should do it. Starting with this base gives you a great foundation and allows you to move on with your retouching. Clothing. Clothing and lines are super important. If there's a wrinkle or something weird along the edge of the outfit, whether you like it or not, your eyes will go there. It's a distraction. If it's a portrait, you want clean lines and no distraction from the connection between the subject and the viewer. If it's fashion, you don't want the viewer to see a wrinkle, a jagged or messy shape of the silhouette. It's a distraction. You can also use the liquify tool in your favor and get very creative. You can add volume and really accentuate shapes and lines in a very in-your-face way. So have fun with it. Go nuts. All right, let's see some differences in clothing, starting with this one. So this one was actually a bit of a beast. You can see that this is for Tom Brown and Unknown, and the client actually selected this, but they were hoping I could fix this, and I was able to fix that. So let me show you how I did that real quick. This was actually a few-step process. 
So I'll take you back from the beginning. This is actually pretty simple. All you gotta do is duplicate this background, shift Apple X, and we're gonna do the same thing as we did for the hair. All you're gonna do is round this off and make it pretty decent. I mean, that's pretty close. And then all you're gonna do is make a new mask, delete that mask, and then with your brush tool, paint it in. So zoom right in. And then you just paint around the ear. Pretty good though. Then you just have to duplicate this layer again and do the same thing that you did with the red. You get, make a new layer, shift command X. And you're really just gonna do the same thing we just did in the previous step. Using a big brush, just bring this right up. You want this to connect to that red line. Turn the mask on, delete it, and just paint it in. But super simple with Liquify. Now you turn on all your layers, you got a nice final image, and no one's the wiser. Next. And then this is very simple, but it's really just the back edge here. So again, Shift Command X. And all you're doing is making sure that it's just nice and smooth. These distracting lines. And really you just want to be looking at the garment. It's really that simple. Turn on all your layers back on and you have a perfect image. Next. This one was a little tricky as well. Once it got rotated, let's turn a crop on so you can see what we're doing. Once this got rotated and added the arm, you can see that I just smoothed out this to give it a little bit of a better shape. So how'd I do that? Well, same thing. New layer, shift command X. And all you're gonna do is just massage this so the shape's much nicer. I like this because this is, was all empty coat space. There's no need to have that extra. And this just improves the shape tremendously. So even this, that small little move made all the difference in the world. So let's turn all of these layers back on. And you can really see how I did manipulate the shape. Next image. So this was a small one as well. You can see that the shape here is just a little bit unflattering. So I did the same thing. By a client's request, I just nipped this in a little bit and just nothing crazy. You just want the shape to be a nice smooth line. But even that's a big difference. It make just that small move makes such a difference. Turn the layers back on. And there you go. This one was actually pretty fun. The flowers seemed a little dull for me, so what I did was fluff them. But again, with a big brush, all you're doing is stretching it up to make it a little bigger. And it actually made these full of life. That simple. Turn all the layers back on. And game changer. Such a difference between the start and the finish. The human form. The trickiest of all liquify moves. When liquefying the human form, you want to be as minimal as possible. Always using a big brush and doing very small moves. Sometimes you want to do it three or four times to see which one feels best. The trick here is to not overdo it. If you're in question whether or not you've overdone it, chances are you've overdone it. Start over. Unless the purpose of your image is to play with the boundary of what's real and what isn't, then your job is to simply reflect the moment and paint your subject in the best possible light. All right, here are the four examples. So if you see before and after, I actually made the hair a lot bigger and I just shaped this a tiny bit. So let me show you how I did that. Duplicate this layer by dragging it down. Shift Command X. Just to make the shape a little smoother, a little nicer, but you know, I'm not doing much. And then what I did was actually I made her hair a little bit bigger. Just small increments working your way around. Done. Bring all the uh, layers back on. And you can see there's a big difference. But again, very simple, very minor. Number two, let's go to this raw. This raw I didn't really do much. I just kind of played with the shape in here and made these lines a little smoother. I also made this line come in a little bit, but nothing crazy. You see, I'm not overdoing it. 
So you see with the crop on, you see it's just a little lopsided here. So with this one, all I did was bring my lines up and match it accordingly. Here again, duplicate, shift command X. Big brush here. And just try to balance it out. You're really just looking for symmetry here. That's what this image was all about. Simple. You turn on all the layers. And you can see that that's the symmetry that we want. Last one. You can see this one here didn't have to do much again. New layer, shift command X. Really all I'm doing is making sure that the line is curved. Accentuating certain parts, but not overdoing it. That's it. So the big difference here was actually the shadows that did the shaping. Background detail. I use this trick so often to simplify backgrounds or stretch uneven white backdrops to be more balanced all around. To be honest, the uses for fixing the backgrounds are absolutely endless. You can see here by these examples that I use it often, and it simplifies a photo in a tremendously easy way. Here's a fun one. This was the image, but you can see when I turn the crop on, it's just very lopsided. So what I did was duplicate the background, broken record, and then zoom out with a very big brush. I just created this kind of V into her. Might not look like much here, but when you put the crop on, it's such a balanced image. And then when you turn everything on and really finesse it, you get this beautiful focal point as opposed to the sloppy one at the beginning. It just brings everything to the center of the image. Your eye can only live here, which is really what it's all about. This one is funny because I get told that it's overly Photoshopped all the time, but really all I did was this front wave was to bring a little bit more symmetry. Uh, you can check out the creating the shot in this image and see exact, exactly how I did it in the link below. But essentially all I did was this. Make it a little bit longer and then add kind of a similar curve to it. And that's how I got that nice wave in the beginning. So when you turn everything on, you see it just frames are very similar to what I did in the previous one. Everything's just taking your eye right to her. This one's funny because I just did it to stretch out the background. You can do it two ways. You can do it one way like this, which really does stretch it. You hold Command T and then hold Shift and just drag it across. Everything looks good here. And just to make sure that it's not broken up completely with a big brush, you just kind of squish it and make it a little bit more irregular so it doesn't look like you stretched it. And then you do the same thing on the other side. And you have your cleaned up background. This one was actually very aggressive. What I did was really pushed it, really wanted to stylize this. So you can see that I made it much bigger, stretched it right up just like the previous ones, painted in even more using the clone tool, redropped our friend back in front, and then just continued it. You can see that when I have the crop in, you can see why I was filling up those marks. So this looks extremely crude. And then I just clean it up with another chunk of grass. So you get fix those lines, do a little dodging and burning to get rid of some craziness, and then just add a blur. And then by the time you add your effects and the grain, it just kind of falls off. You get this really surreal quality. So this is one where I was really pushing it. The artist for his album and all of his, his artwork, he really wanted to push the limit between what's real and what's fake. And that's really where we came with this. It turns into this very surreal, out of this world kind of portrait. Most importantly, just have fun with it. Mess around with old photos, but do it often. Only with a tremendous amount of practice will you really start to master this infinitely deep tool. Also, prints for my first collection, edition, sign, and ship right to your front door are on sale now on my Shopify. Use promo code CoreyPhoto50 to save $50 and get free shipping. Thanks for watching guys. My name is Corey Vanderpool at Corey Photo on Twitter and Instagram. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment and smash that subscribe button. Cheers guys. Happy shooting.